Hello and welcome to Securing Your Network from Attacks. So let's go over what we're going to learn in this course. So the course roadmap, the first part we're going to go over is air induction to network threats. So in this section, we're going to briefly go over what, the, what you can expect in this course, that yes, you are a target, meaning that whether you're a large business, small business, home user, student, in some fashion or way, you are going to be a target for a malicious attacker. And we're going to go over kind of how to identify that, how to protect yourself, and if you do get compromised, how to mitigate that, how to take care of what, what happened. We're also going to go over typical attacks that you'll see on the network, and we're going to be talking about DOS and DDoS attacks, denial of service attacks, and distributed denial of service attacks. In section two, how a malicious hacker goes about breaking your network, we're going to be talking about a hacker's methodology. We're also going to learn what we can learn from uh, malicious hackers. We're going to be going over scanning tools and methodology, social engineering, physical attacks. We're going to be getting sneaky with man-in-the-middle attacks, and we'll be taking a look at the exploit database. In Section 3, Securing Your Network Through Your Users, we're going to learn what an insider threat is why employee training is going to be important, and we'll, we'll be going over some tips for that. We'll also be talking about why you need to, to strike a balance between security and ease of use. And we'll be talking about employee reporting. In Section 4, Securing Your Machines, we're going, to be, we're going to be talking about why you need to patch everything. Antiviruses and console tools. We'll be taking a look at fake error messages, and we're going to take a look into scareware and what that is. We'll be talking about how to limit your user rights and why you should do that, uh, application reduction, and a VPN, and why VPNs are so important. Section 5, Logs and Auditing. We're going to be going over system log files, monitoring software. We'll be talking about the Snort IDS, Intrusion Detection System. We're going to be talking about network alert software and monitoring with Meraki. And we'll be talking about what an IP address is and why they're so important. In Section 7, Red Teams and Blue Team Approach, we'll be talking about what a red team is, what a blue team is, and whether you're, you should be looking at if you're going to keep it in-house or contracted. Section 8, Tracking a Hacker, OSINT. So we'll be talking about what OSINT is, or Open Source Intelligence. We're going to be taking a look at the Trace Labs uh, Linux distribution, which is going to be used for OSINT investigations. We'll be talking about tracking by IP addresses, canary tokens, and Bitcoin tracking. And Section 9, Recovering from Your Attack. So we, we'll, we're going to be talking about damage control and assessment, backup and recovery, and developing um, and what we can learn from, uh, from being attacked. So, cybercrime is on the rise, with a total of $1.2 billion lost to phishing attacks in 2018 alone. With $7.3 billion lost to ransomware attacks in 2019, the threat landscape has grown significantly over the years, targeting large businesses, healthcare, school, home users, small business. So, really, there's really no nothing that's off-limit to a malicious attacker anymore. So, we're going to be talking about... How do we tackle this growing problem? This course is designed to give you the knowledge and skills to identify, mitigate, and prevent cybersecurity related issues. I'm uh, trying to make this course highly practical and it's designed to follow along at home or even at work. So by the end of this course, you should have a solid understanding about a wide variety of cybersecurity related threats for your home and workplace. So prerequisites, it's gonna be fairly low. It's gonna be you should have a Windows 8 machine or 10, a Linux operating system, OS X, any of those will be fine. Any processor, any type of memory, uh, as long as you can install software on it. You should have at least 10 gigabytes free and administrative access to your machine. Now, if you're going to be installing the Trace Labs virtual machine, I do recommend you have about, I'm going to say, 40 to 50 gigs free of hard drive space. Otherwise, if you're just kind of following along on most of the course, you can get away with about 10 gigs of space. So that was a quick synopsis about the course, and here we go.